Hi, everybody, and hi, Anastasia. Uh, this is the promised career interviews with parents who uh, volunteered to tell us briefly about their jobs and how our teenagers can pursue a similar career in Australia. Now, my first guest today is Anastasia Bolueva. I'm going to call Anastasia in Russian, not Anastasia. I don't know. Anastasia, what do you think about it? That's all good. All good, that right. Sounds great. And Anastasia is a mining engineer. Because this, I'm so out of depth when it comes to mining, I'm going to give the reins to Anastasia to explain what she actually <laughs> does and how she got there. So your turn. <laughs> yeah, so it's very surprising as well for me to hear that someone who lives in Western Australia uh, doesn't have as much uh, uh, understanding of mining in general because um, this is actually a capital for mining one of the one of the really uh, big hubs for mining around the world um, and obviously iron ore has been the biggest one but there is definitely a range of commodities um, in western Australia and um, initially what attracted me to this area um, in the first place is uh, obviously um, such a big hub um, in Perth and Western Australia for mining engineering. So it's it's a it's a like a destination you come and then you basically can spend your whole career spending 30 to 40 years, um, whatever you choose to do um, basically here. So yeah, just open it up. Anyway, um, so I guess I am a Russian and I did not study here. So I have a degree in mining engineering, um, specializing in open pit mining from Moscow State University. Uh, uh, of mining and uh, I did graduate in 2007 um, so my career so far has been 14 years um, and uh, throughout this time I have worked in Russia for one year I worked in Chile for two years and I worked in Australia for 11 years now um, I also did an internship in Australia while I was still studying at my university back in Moscow. Um, and I also went to the mines in Tanzania for two months in my first year of working as a mining engineer in Russia. So basically after the first year, then I took off to Chile um, uh, for two years. And then from there, I moved to Australia. And uh, my experience so far um, spans the commodities uh, of gold, copper, nickel, and iron ore. So it's quite an important point um, for mining engineers to cover a variety of commodities as well. Um, so in terms of looking at the career, um, it's also important to plan around um, diversity of commodities as well. Um, in terms of the, uh, so far, I guess I've done a lot of operational roles and I have to say that my focus in early years, um, based on the um, guidance of some mentors early in my career that I received, especially the ones that were not in Russia, uh, all of the other mentors I, I, I met throughout my um, time working in Chile, Tanzania and here in Australia is basically focus your career working at mines to gain that operational and practical experience for basically as much as you can afford before moving to the more city-based and more comfortable roles mm -hmm. basically that then can um, be the, um, um, you know, the whatever you really want it to be um, because our uh, degree allows us and our, I guess, if you plan your career well, allows us to do a very broad um, sort of uh, range of roles, industries even, um, and I'll touch on it later down the track. So then um, in terms of uh, um, after the operational roles, I also um, uh, did a number of roles in the corporate office um, and uh, they are spending the uh, um, sort of evaluations, they're spending the tactical and strategic mind planning. Um, and uh, outside of, I guess, the uh, technical roles I've held, um, I was uh, in leadership positions for about three and a half years now, uh, and I did leadership positions by, uh, on the operational level and also in the corporate office. So my current position is basically superintendent of strategic mind planning for Central Pilbara Hub um, at uh, BHP RNO. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I guess the... Um, responsibilities I have is uh, to deliver the strategic mine plans, mine designs, um, uh, studies, uh, reserve reporting, 
Um, and uh, that's all on my hub uh, where I'm focused on. So central Pilbara hub is actually area C and south flank. Um, and over the next few years, we are ramping up to deliver half of uh, iron ore production for BHP. So it's a pretty big yes. size um, uh, sort of uh, responsibility I have within, mm. within my area. So okay. that's pretty um, much a little bit about myself, Tatiana. Yeah, that's a very impressive portfolio and a very interesting, diverse sort of location-wise and experience-wise career. And to um, uh, veer off into a completely different direction, because we're obviously focusing on the young people and trying to help them with potential pathways. I guess this particular pathway would be relevant to anyone who is in Western Australia at the moment. Um, and you probably getting some new graduates in, in, yes. in your office that you come across. Um, so what degree do they normally come with to your office? Is Which university would potentially cater for uh, mining engineering out of the, well, not many, four or yeah, four plus one private in Western Australia? Yes, so I'll start uh, with a little bit of a stack back here as well, mm. because probably the context is an important piece. So uh, when I was uh, um, at my operational um, roles, um, I had a large uh, number of uh, graduates coming in through my team that I had to uh, basically uh, take under my wing. And um, what was happening uh, was that a few years ago, we actually experienced a downturn uh, where um, we stopped hiring as many graduate mining engineers for, for a few years. And what that um, resulted in is that there was a very small number of mining engineers who actually uh, chose to study that um, degree. And uh, as a result, after that, so now, right, so that would obviously be four, four year degree typically here. Uh, what will happen is that there would be very few people actually graduating as mining engineers. So before COVID, we had the luxury of importing um, skilled uh, professionals from overseas, which is how I came here. Mm -hmm. uh, now, all of that shut down, basically, and there is very few people coming. Um, and what I have observed in a recent couple of years is that we are actually taking on to the graduate programs uh, uh, onto mining engineering people who came from mechanical engineering background mm -hmm. and others. Um, so any, I think there were uh, robotics and, uh, and things like that, mechatronics, uh, um, there were actually even some electrical engineers for some reason as well. But what will happen with our organization because we are very large, um, some of those people can actually end up jumping around through different uh, departments even. So they might start with me, but then they would be going around um, and trying themselves over the 18 months of the graduate program in different, different areas as well. And then if they are successful, then upon completion of that, they can apply for permanent roles and hopefully secure themselves a permanent role. So what you, organization. Yeah. So what you're saying is, even if you're not pursuing a mining engineering yes, degree yes. and you are studying, well, engineering in general, um, yes, as long yes. as uh, you are performing well, you are able to apply for yes, uh, yes. a role in your company. And then upon the performance review, you can secure yourself a permanent position with the company. Yes, and that I have to caveat that as well to say this is in the current environment, in the mm. current climate. So uh, obviously we are now seeing that uh, mining is booming again um, across the world and in Western Australia as well, in, in Australia mm. in many areas. So what is going to happen is that we are going to see more engineers uh, now going back into this industry again. And you might find that there will be more applicants that are actually mining engineers coming through later. And all of this window of opportunity to basically take in engineers from other engineering degrees uh, might not be there anymore, right? So obviously, as a preference for a person who is just considering what they want to do, it's probably still better to consider um, the actual degree that uh, that you want to do as your career later on and then focus yes. on that because essentially that will probably give you the best outcome uh, anyway but yeah currently there there yeah. have been precedents um, across the board where we have been seeing more 
different engineering backgrounds coming into money engineering and then trying to basically gain operational experience and build mm. their career um, that way, pivoting from other engineering. Mm. Okay, so and if it was um, uh, one of the universities in Perth, you'd say that would be the University of Western Australia. That's right. Curtin mm. University, University of Western Australia. Um, there is a mining school in Kalgoorlie as well. Mm. Um, and to be honest, there is a range of uh, um, a range of in, in universities around Australia, I guess, that offer these programs. And I have had... Mm. Um, students from uh, University of Wollongong coming coming across okay. the University of New South Wales coming across there have been lots of people who were um, ready to relocate as well from uh, over the eastern states uh, for jobs here because obviously Western Australia mining um, is very attractive for mining engineers. It's interesting that you're saying that and as I've mentioned before even though I'm kind of out of depth but everybody's around me is in mining, uh, the mm. people we've met uh, in the last 18 months. And what they're saying um, is actually, well, they are saying it is booming at the moment for as long as Brazil is not doing well. But mm -hmm. once the mining, especially the ones that are, they're building in Africa is going to pick up, we're going to go into yes. another <laughs> downturn. So what yes. do you think so about that? Uh, one of the uh, so one of the questions uh, Tatiana you had, which was a really good one in terms of the um, you know what are what are the things that um, you like and uh, don't like about your um, uh, your job um, is actually a very very good question. Is that uh, one of the things uh, there is um, cyclical nature of the mining industry? And also within that, you can have commodities, different commodities going through their cycles. So when you look around, what's the iron ore price? What's the gold price? What's the mm. precious metals in general price? Uh, what's the coal doing, right? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So they all will have um, their own sort of uh, peaks and troughs and slightly different time. And they sort of follow each other in a certain cycle as well. So you could say that once they start the cycle, you, you know that everything else is probably going to go through a similar trajectory. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, definitely um, that is the case. Uh, however, I guess specifically to iron ore, it's a very... Uh, base commodity. It's a very fundamental commodity for uh, for the world. Um, and in terms of the uh, volumes that uh, I guess each company produces, there is an element where we are also controlling um, how much uh, we produce and how we diversify our product and what product we have and what the marketing um, department is doing mm -hmm. as well in order to um, secure ourselves the contracts and how we structure those things, etc. Definitely, there is an element of what's happening with Brazil due to their, um, I guess, history of dump failures and the mm. COVID impacts that uh, potentially have been a little bit uh, worse there compared to obviously locally here in Western Australia. And you can understand why the local government is so strict in trying mm. to keep the borders shut and keep all these uh, industries that are delivering so much. Uh, I guess um, so much profit for the for the country, mm. uh, really really tight, um, and obviously the industry is very grateful for that because that's part why we were able to continue mm. operating with very very little hiccups here and there. Um, so yeah, but um, in terms of other ones, so you look at gold as well, um, and uh, obviously uh, it's a very healthy it's a very healthy posi position around the world anyway in terms of the prices and the cost of productions and mining companies are typically really smart in terms of keeping their costs down. That's where we start in terms of operational excellence and why Australian mines are particularly competitive is that yes, labor is more expensive, uh, but we try to drive our costs down by other means, right? Mm. So we're really good operators here. Um, so that's part of uh, Australian success in the um, uh, raw materials industry in general is we're just able to drive those costs down uh, via different means and obviously economy of scale as well. So um, that's definitely playing a part. And um, even, even if the uh, prices do go down significantly, we're still going to stay very, very competitive. Um, mm. Well, so, you're yeah. totally selling it to me. Maybe I should re-qualify. <laughs> um, <No. laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess the um, 
uh, one of the uh, one of the perks for me that I had absolutely no idea, and I I have to say that I had no idea about mining industry when I was choosing this career mm-hmm. in the first place, right? So I had my own story there in terms of how all that came about. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the strong uh, points around uh, being a mining engineer is the security um, in your career. So you're basically gonna have job if you are. Uh, if you're good enough at thinking what you're actually doing, what you're trying to achieve, rather than just going through the paces throughout your life, um, mm. you're probably going to end up with a very solid career, wherever you are, because it's geographical mobility, one thing. So you can obviously follow those commodity cycles if you want to. So you can mm. always go, okay, this commodity is booming somewhere, so I can actually take mm. a job somewhere else. Uh, or if you don't want to be geographically mobile, you're just focusing on doing what you're doing really well in one place. And obviously in Western Australia, um, the uh, different commodities uh, providing you the um, diversification you want. So my mm. nickel and iron ore, uh, I guess, journeys have been with BHP, right? My gold and copper journey was with Barrick, uh, which is the Canadian, uh, pretty large Canadian mm. uh, producer. Um, so, yeah, so there is definitely that. And uh, because the commodities are so fundamental to everything we produce in the world um, and any story you talk about, especially right now with the green energy, uh, with fast to net zero around the world, uh, with electrification of the fleets and uh, um, changing to different power generation etc cetera, etc cetera. the big companies have a lot of leverage here and they are able to invest at, at scale and being able to get to those uh, very very competitive uh, even cost profiles while pursuing mm. uh, all of this um, future past to net zero i guess um, uh, road that we are choosing for ourselves and and competing for that capital low cost capital etc so it's definitely a uh, such a fundamental uh, thing for our world in general wherever you are so yeah so being a mining engineer is definitely one of those uh, future proof kind of things you can do and then as you as you get on that path you also need Mm. to make sure that you're actually doing the right things rather than getting Mm. too comfortable too quickly Mm. Um, and then uh, by doing that you're obviously still gonna have pretty solid career but you might not gain as much satisfaction from it because you're gonna end up wanting the variety of things you do and wanting maybe you know if you if you are naturally a leader right and you'll Mm. you'll see it in yourself as you you know if you don't know about it now maybe later on you'll see it in yourself right and it's important uh, to build your career in a way where you can actually satisfy all of those sides of yourself to be um, you know comfortable and and happy and growing and feeling like you know if you have 30 40 years of doing what you're doing you know you you better you better take care of it as well so that's basically in a nutshell Tatiana so I've got two more questions for you Anastasia the first one is you know if if somebody were to choose uh, a course now um, taking uh, into account the cyclical nature of mining would you say uh, they're better off doing a generic degree in engineering and and then just Uh, getting into the industry on merit, doing um, work experience, and then when we have another downturn, they can uh, pivot and do um, engineering elsewhere and wait until the next boom and jump back into mining. Because because it gives them more versatility. And if they're not, um, if if they um, decide to have a family and stay in one place, that also gives them options. Yes. So... Um, I have to say that um, uh, if you are doing different engineering careers and you are um, midway through career wanting to switch between or say Mm. you you get in and you work five years in mining engineering and then the next five years you want to go to electrical engineering or mechanical Mm. engineering or civil, um, any of those. So um, I would uh, personally not recommend it unless you really don't know what you want Mm. to do. Uh, because if you are going to, to go down that path, um, you have to imagine yourself spending a um, large amount of hours committed to, um, to a certain area and then having to pivot and start from almost from beginning. Um, mm. It would be difficult. Um, if you are doing leadership roles, so if you say after about 10 years of your career, you get to leadership roles, uh, there is potential for easier 
switching between different areas of being a leader in one engineering area versus another area, there could be a little bit easier switch in there as well, depending okay. on what sort of skills you were, you were able mm. to pick up along the way as well. Um, okay. In terms of the recommendation, I would uh, my my option was basically the only option available to me at that moment to talk mm -hmm. about. Uh, the uh, potential good career for me with the professors from the university mm. um, that came over to my school where I studied and it was a whole whole story there anyway but um, they sounded really interesting and I have seen open pits throughout my childhood mm. when I was visiting my grandparents and in, in the places we lived there were always mines around so I, I grew up driving uh, on the alongside the open pits um, in different places and uh, just seeing all, all of that visually and just being the type of person I am, it sounded like a good, uh, interesting career. And then when I got to it, it just built from there, from strength to strength mm. for me. Once I learned about all of the different opportunities um, around the world available to me. That's so yes, uh, in, my, in my case, it was definitely pick one thing and just yeah. uh, in, and just keep grinding in that mm. one area. And then if you do that in the right order, I guess, um, you can then open um, yourself up for opportunities uh, that are really, really extraordinary. That's, that's really good. And the last question I've got is uh, female um, in, the in the industry, because um, as we know, the window of opportunity for our kids to be open to different career paths uh, actually closes at around teenage years. So as um, young children, we, we, we dream of being whatever, because <laughs> we don't really understand the sense of prestige for some occupations and That's we right. dream, but then teenagehood comes and it all closes for you, unless somebody like the professors at your school would come to your school and talk about the um, engineering industries, male driven mostly, but, and if we take mining, for example, how is it, um, so what's, what's mining like for a mom <laughs> yes. of a school kid? Because I'm guessing you travel quite a bit. Yes. And, um, and it's high pressure and probably very stressful. So what is it like? <laughs> um, I guess it, it, it would be stressful if you don't know what's going on. <laughs> but having having uh, you know having uh, quite a number of years up my sleeve does help me with the uh, um, you know not being stressed uh, about different things because I've been I've been I've been there and I've done that and mm. uh, I've been exposed to various levels of leadership in our organizations whatever I have worked and different level of, um, I guess, uh, technical versus non-technical people, et cetera. So after a while, um, you definitely build uh, the right, I guess, uh, skin uh, for mm. things. In terms of females, it's quite interesting because obviously I'm very privileged in where I work now. And one of the reasons why I stuck with BHP for so long is because one is the variety of commodities and all of the technical aspect of it. The other one is that you truly feel welcome and you truly feel mm -hmm. valued for actually what you contribute there. Um, and we have actually in the last few years uh, driven actively the female participation and diversity targets. So we actually have KPIs around the percentage of females um, that are in our departments, right? So on mine sites, as well as in corporate office, my manager is a female, my head of, uh, which is like a general manager level mm. is a female. Um, and uh, in, my, is a female. <laughs> in my team, I've got um, a pretty, um, a pretty close to 50, 50. Wow. Uh, and uh, across the board, when we uh, so I, I obviously travel to mine sites every now and then. I don't I don't do that um, that often, to be honest. And it's not a problem because it's uh, around once a month trip for me uh, to go there for the basically stakeholder relationship and um, uh, engagement on the key work um, that mm -hmm. we need to do. But uh, and sometimes of the year there could be a little bit more travel based on the deliverables mm -hmm. um, that we've got and the engagements we have around uh, the site. Cycle. Basically, we've got a, a corporate alignment cycle that we uh, basically contribute towards significantly. So around that um, is our travel times as well. 
Um, but in general, uh, females have uh, a lot of opportunities uh, in our industry at the moment. And it's probably the big ones, the big companies are definitely driving a very, very strong female participation targets. And obviously, nowadays, investors are demanding um, that sort of uh, ESG aspect of the, especially from the big companies. Um, uh, you need to be competitive there so that you get the investments, right? And you get the interest, et cetera, and you get the social license to operate. Um, so we actually um, have quite a yeah, quite significant target on the females, um, on the also indigenous employment. Mm. Uh, and uh, my particular team is looking at uh, receiving an intern, uh, an indigenous intern this year in my team as well. Um, mm. So just to, um, you know, just just to open this up a little bit to say that, look, um, in the past, maybe um, the thinking was it's not the industry for uh, females, whereas mm -hmm. now is uh, definitely not so at all. Um, and the, there is plenty of support systems as well aware, uh, available um, in the companies. And especially if you're going to the big ones, um, I can't mm. speak for small ones that much because mm. um, I guess my experience have been with a reasonably medium sized to large size companies. So um, it might be a little bit different at the, at the smaller companies as well. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I've met a few people working for Rio Tinto and um, they're all uh, female and they come across as very strong and determined, um, outspoken individuals. And um, to sum up, um, look, uh, that was really good. And I feel that you sold mining engineering pathway to many <laughs> of our listeners That's interesting. today, including <laughs> myself. No, just kidding. <laughs> Um, but I definitely get my kids to listen to this. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Anastasia, for your time. That was a pleasure meeting you today. Oh, good. Thank you, Tatiana. Yeah. I hope that helps someone at least Absolutely. one person. That would be great. And also, um, don't don't hesitate to get in touch with me. So I guess I'm in the group. Um, and mm. the way you feel comfortable, um, you can get in touch with me and I'm happy to chat further uh, yep. with anyone who's interested. Lovely. Okay, thank you.